Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and I think I've got something interesting to show you today. I've been working on this chords mode for the OPZ app for the past few weeks and uh, it's finally sort of usable and um, I'm, I'd like to show you what it can do and tell you a bit about it and tell you where you can download it and install it and whatnot um, and tell you how I, how I made it. Um, so before I get to that, I want to thank everybody so much for um, all of their likes and comments and people that have subscribed to the videos. I was really impressed, or really pleased, as you say, with um, the uh, Double Triggs video. People seem to have used it and found it interesting and useful. So uh, thank you so much to everybody. So to start with, I want to show you that I am on the OPZ app here, right? the normal OPZ app. Um, and uh, what this is, is well, it's called a video pack. And you can load it into this uh, motion um, mode on the OPZ app. Now, this normally you use this for making sort of interactive uh, visualizations for your music, which you control with this track number 16 here, this, this motion track here, and you can use it to sort of change the scene and change the what's going on and the movements and things. It's really cool, it's really interesting. Now, I'm not artistic at all, and so that doesn't appeal to me, but then I saw, well, it does appeal to me, but I just don't have the ability to sort of you know, execute. Uh, but then I saw a video last year by Cuckoo where he was recreating the Tombola sequencer from the OP1 on the OPZ app. And I thought that was really cool. So I went and found out more about it. And I found out that you can actually uh, make UI elements that you can use to control your synthesizer. So that's even cooler. Um, so I made this chords app. My musical ambitions definitely outstrip my musical talent. Definitely from a the perspective of performing music and whatnot. So I wanted a chords mode that would enable me to be able to play chords of different types um, easily. And this is a feature that I like in other synthesizers and the OPZ doesn't have it, so I thought I'd make it. So this is the, the interface here. Uh, you have these eight buttons, which are the different chords of the scale from the root to the, the root note to the root note. Um, I've got it set to C, at the, the key of C at the moment um, and and it's Ionian, so it's the major scale. Um, so the, these are the, the, the chords. If you were to go up C like this, basically, the little the triads that go up like this. If you go onto the motion track, and then you can use the encoders, and it's sort of, I've matched, hopefully matched the colors up to the encoder that, that changes them. So the top row is page one, and you can change the key. So So you can change the key. Uh, you can also change the octave. Um, with the blue encoder, you can change the mode um, with the yellow encoder. So this is, like I said, it's this is the major scale, um, Ionian mode it's called, and this is the Aeolian mode. That's the natural minor scale in Western music. And uh, so these are both very commonly used, and there's other modes as well which are interesting and not quite as common. But for example, Dorian. Dorian's interesting, it's one of my favourite modes, and it sounds, I think it sounds really lovely. And it's used, um, it is actually quite common, I think, or in pop music. So is it uh, Eleanor Rigby, I think, by the Beatles, is in Dorian. It's got this sort of bittersweet sort of sound to it. It's really appealing, I like it a lot. Um, and there's other ones as well. Uh, Phrygian, Mixolydian is interesting. It's, it's very hopeful sounding. Um, Locrian is really dissonant. Um, so they're, they're cool, they're interesting. There's lots of other scales, of course, which I have not included here, um, but I've just included the modes because um, it's I'm interested in them, I'm interested in messing around with them. Uh, I think Dorian is, is, you know, some of them have really interesting characters and I wanted to use them. I might add more in the future, more different types of scales, um, but I'm not sure yet. Um, one thing to, to mention just now, that this notation is kind of standard. Um, when you've got a lowercase uh, letter here, uh, Roman numeral here, it means it's a minor chord. If you've got uppercase, it's a major, a major chord, so it's sort of brighter sounding. And then this one with the little circle beside it is a diminished chord. So it's got the third notes flattened down and it kind of has a, a sort of 
it has a sort of tension about it it wants to kind of resolve um, and so they're kind of it's useful being able to see this again if you're like me and you're you don't have much of a feel for this, it's nice to be able to see what kind of sound you're going to get when you press a chord. Um, the last one, uh, the red encoder, is the form of the chord. So this is, uh, this is a normal triad like this, three notes like this, well, it's this chord here, right? And that's the root form of it. If you def You've got something called the first inversion, and what you do is you move this bottom note up to the top here, so like, uh, an octave up, and then that's the first inversion. And if you get the second inversion, then it is the the bottom two notes have been moved up like this. So we could do it in another position, and then you'd be able to see more easily. But this one, so for example, there, um, you move these two notes up here like this, and then that's your second inversion. And they've got a different character to them. I think the first inversion is like sort of the most constant sounding. It kind of feels nice and stable. Uh, the second, there's a, like a sort of a tension of the second one. Anyway, they sound different. I don't know what I'm talking about. All these this non, these nonsense things that I barely understand. But um, certainly that's that's how it sounds to me. And they're fun to play around with. Uh, on the second page, you can change the destination, right? So um, set here to the... the um, to the chorus track, um, if you you can send it to the arc track, of course. So you can send it to the arc track. You can uh, send it to the um, the lead track, of course. And it just depends on which um, which patch you've got loaded in there, which um, plug you've got loaded whether it'll be polyphonic or not, this one this one is not polyphonic for me. Uh, same with the bass track, is I don't think it can ever be polyphonic, um, so cards won't work very nicely. You can use it on the samples tracks, and it'll play three samples on top of each other, which you know, is quite an interesting, interesting sound. Maybe you need that, um, but yeah, so, so you can send it to wherever you like as well, all the way up to 16. So, you can use it to control some an external synth that you've got connected or a computer or whatever you like, uh, which is quite nice that you can sort of control it in one place. As well, another cool thing is that you can use the, the motion sequencer to be able to, to sequence these, right? So if I play and then I record changing something like this, then you can see that it's parameter locked and it will change. So you can change, you can um, uh, parameter lock all of this. So you could change the relative minor or something if you wanted to whilst you were doing it. And of course, this is a nice thing about having it there. Another good thing is that it will store the settings here and this will automatically change if you go somewhere else. Like it will automatically update to what you've got it saved as, right? So um, that's that's kind of a, a nice thing, that you, you know, a nice advantage of it. Um, so, so yeah, that's the, the video pack itself. There's a link in the description to where you can download it. Um, there's a GitHub page with the source code, source code and some instruction and the built video pack as well. So you can go and mess around with the source code and modify this and change this in whatever way you like. Um, as well, you can download the, the sort of compiled video pack, which you can install onto your OPZ app. And there's instructions for how to do that and some you know, comments on usage. So hopefully you, you think that's interesting. Now, if you want to find out how I made it, you can hang about and I'll sort of show you the project in Unity and how everything's linked together. And it was so much harder to make than I thought it would be, mainly because you kind of need to, for security reasons, I think mainly, you need to, you're very restricted in what you can do. You need to use their way of doing things, basically. You can't write code freely to, to be able to change, you know, to, to modify this, which made it much more complicated to make. So I'll show you that just now. If you're leaving at this point, please consider liking and subscribing and all that. Um, and commenting and let me know how you got on with it and install it. But right now I'll show you how, how it works. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, a super quick overview of sort of motion graphics and a little, you know, and a point towards how you get started with these kinds of things. Um, first of all, if you go to the OPZ guide, 
on the Teenage Engineering website and then go down to this section here, App 23, and then click on Motion. You get the information about Motion. There's not a huge amount of stuff here, but it gives you a link to this um, GitHub site where you can download the Video Lab um, code asset pack and then you can sort of import it into your um, into your project. Now uh, there is the wiki here which um, has lots of information. Before I, I get to that though, um, this is cool. This is an example. This is one of the bundled video packs um, that, that comes with uh, um, the OPZ app and it's really cool. This is the type of thing that you would you could do. You make sort of um, 3D graphics to make music videos that you can sequence along with your music. Really cool. Um, but you can also make uh, sort of UI elements as well. So if you want to if you want to do this, you can go to the wiki here and um, you go to the getting started section, it will tell you what you need to do. I would recommend that you use Unity Hub to download and manage all your versions of the Unity software because you need a very specific version of Unity to get it to work. Um, it's not guaranteed to work with every version of it basically and it doesn't work with the most recent version. So you download that, then you import the Video Lab code, which you can get from releases on the front page of this. Um, and then you import it in, set up these settings, and you're good to go. Once you do that, you will, so you won't have this stuff, but you will have all of these folders here, apart from fonts, actually, I put that there, but all of the other ones. And uh, this is really important because it's all the code for Video Lab. And it's important as well because it's the only code that you can have for Video Lab. So there's scripts inside here, right? C Sharp scripts, but you can't have any other um, any other code. You can't make your own arbitrary C Sharp scripts uh, because it, they won't be bundled with when it builds the video pack. I think that's for security reasons, so you can't have arbitrary scripts running. But just, I'm, I'm pointing this out because I didn't know this when I started and um, I spent a day programming this up in code um, and I couldn't use that because it won't import the script. So you need to do it their way and if you want to do sort of programming and interact with the UI, you need to use this CLAC visual programming language. I'll just show you what that's like here. So this is the, the app itself. These are all UI elements. So all of the text labels and the, these are buttons here that you can set events to. And you set events using um, this, this, this CLAC. So uh, if I show you here, we'll load up this. Um, this is a CLAC patch. You right click here and you can add CLAC to get the, the patch. And this is the visual scripting language that you essentially, that you have to use. So for example, this is taking um, the value from the key knob and using the octave, um, the value from the octave knob, these ones down here, and then doing some maths in them to, to mix them together to get the base note value, which is then fed into this patch down here, which is uh, specific to the button, the chord button, and it does a whole bunch of um, addition to, to take the base note value and create the actual chord and then manage the input event when you tap that button and send the, the output as well. So th there's lots of different types of nodes that you can make here that do different things, um, convert values and, um, you know, switch between different things, you know, various different types of input, which could be from a device or it might be just a, a base value like this, like a floating point number. Um, so th there's lots of very odd things about it as well when you start to use it. You need to do things in very indirect ways. For example, you have to use floats. Um, you can't sort of write arbitrary functions. You've got to use these kind of um, um, mixes, they ca they're called, where you modify them in some way. Uh, for example, here, this is a weird thing. Because of it's a float and I'm wanting really wanting integers here, right, whole values, um, it, there's some rounding errors that can occur. And so if this is actually set to zero, then it won't play the chord properly. So there's lots of weird, wee peculiar things that you just need to get used to. Um, but and as well, for example, you can see that everything's overlapping here. Now, if I play, you will hopefully, once it compiles it all, um, hopefully be able to see, if you look down here, that, come on, anytime, yep, that they disappear once it starts, right? And that's because you need to, you, you, you can't programmatically create and destroy things, so you need to have everything there and turn them on and off using these things called selectors. So if I go to this patch here, then it has a selector which turns on and off these different labels. So yeah, it, it took ages and it was a pain. Um, and you know, it was quite a manual process, although I did write a script to generate sections of this. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, uh, 
if you're not if you're used to programming, then it, it's kind of a frustrating process to to do something you think should be quite simple. You do it in an indirect way. But I totally understand why teenage engineering did it. Like I said, you don't want arbitrary code running on the the app. So it's very cool. I, I suggest that you know, please, um, if you're interested in this, download the cards video pack code and play around with it. And if you extend it, then let me know and say something in the comments or make a pull request on GitHub or something like this. Um, if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial about how to make these types of things, or if you'd like one when I make something from the beginning, then let me know and I can make something like that. I'll also put links in the description to a really good YouTube channel called Video Lab Creators, which uh, gives you information about um, sort of making video packs, as well as Cuckoo's tutorials for um, Video Lab, which were really useful, like his um, his Tombola, um, um, his Tombola sequencer that he made and uh, his little animation video pack that he made too. So great, thank you for listening. Uh, if you've made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Um, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you find it useful. I'll make more stuff like this and tell me what you'd like to see if you'd want me to focus on this stuff more. I'm sh I've got an idea to make a kind of generative music maker that is using the physics engine in Unity to make elements of the music and then responding to that to build up and make it more complex. So like a, it's like a random events or semi-random events that you, you, you sort of inspire you to make other bits of the music. That's the idea I have just now. I don't know when I'll get around to doing it though. Um, excellent. Thanks uh, again for watching and I'll see you later.